Welcome back to Sim Project, everybody. Thanks for stopping by and checking out today's video. Uh, down here in the makeshift temporary workshop, uh, actually the basement project. As you can see, we got uh, drywall up. Uh, it's painted, floor is going in next week. And uh, fingers crossed, I can start moving the simulator down here shortly and start putting some of this stuff together. Until that time, however, what I do have I finished up here in the weekend, I have got, let me see what I can do to get you a picture of it here. This is the Garmin. GMA 1347 radio panel. Now, if you know anything about uh, the Garmin uh, equipment in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, x -Plane, I think even P3D uses this in some situations. This is the radio panel that ties with the Garmin G1000 avionics suite um, in Flight Simulator. And FYI, just to make sure everybody's clear on this, this is for a flight simulator. This is not a real world aircraft. Um, I've had uh, a couple comments on one of my other videos. Question that. This is for flight sim. This is for at home. This is not for a real aircraft. But yeah, I bought this kit from Flight Sim DIY. Came with the, uh, the all the STL files to print for the 3D print because that's what this all is. It's 3D printed. I spent the extra and bought the circuit boards the pre-made circuit board, um, Arduino, resistors, all that stuff. I had to add that myself, and uh, you can't see it in here. I'll throw a little video clip up here after this. Um, there is another board down inside that the 13 or so push button backlit switches connect to, uh, along with about 13 or 14 other mode active mode LEDs. Uh, another push button down below for the backup display setting, and a uh, dual pot rotary re encoder with push button. So like I said, 3D printed this. I printed it in black PLA at a uh, 0.12 layer height. And then when it got down to the last three or four layers, put a pause in the G code, had it pause and uh, then chained to a white filament. And I don't know if how well this is gonna zoom. I apologize, GoPros aren't meant for getting in close like this. But as you can see that uh, filament changed midway did a real nice job giving me the textures. Would have been really nice if I had a resin printer that can print that big. Unfortunately, I don't. So, you know, that's what I had to go with. Um, yeah, super, super happy. Excellent product. Um, the boards, uh, when I ordered them, I think they come out of somewhere around Seattle. I'm, uh, you know, I'm halfway between Toronto and Ottawa here in Canada. So less than 10 days I had them. It was perfect. They were sent registered mail, had a tracking sheet. Pretty, pretty low cost to ship it to. All in all, the uh, prints, the plans were like 10 bucks US. The circuit boards were, I think it was $20 for the circuit boards. Arduino, like $30 for the Arduino. Some cabling, some push button, stuff like that. All in, this is under a $100 project. And I think, uh, think this is gonna make a real bit of a game changer for the sim. Mostly because it gives you real quick access to your different comms. Some of the buttons don't work, of course, because it's just a limitation of the flight simulator. They're not used. However, what I think they'd be really good for doing, use a FSUI PC or something and key send options, and you could use this to mute your uh, Discord channel or TeamSpeak or whatever you might be using for uh, inner pilot chat. You could probably use the push buttons to control your Twitch stream as well if you wanted to. So excellent product, great build, amazing design. I got to give the guys that... Uh, Flight Sim DIY, like props for this. This is excellent to the point where I've actually gone ahead and I've bought their G1000 kit. Um, and nothing wrong with, uh, if you've uh, been a fan of the channel at all and you've seen the video I did last summer of a G1000 I was working on, I've abandoned that project. I've moved to a different one because this one allows the backlights to be controlled across all of their equipment through the G1000, which I think that'll be a big plus. So can't looking forward to that. Arduino, this is the one thing you do need to watch. This is the Arduino Mega 2560 Pro Mini. If you buy one, just to let you know, there's more than one version of this out there. Look for the one with the red push button in the top corner. That's a reset button on the Arduino. Don't make the mistake like, like I did. That as well as an Arduino Mega 2560 Mini Pro. Pretty much similar, looks same size. USB-C connector, where this is micro USB. But if you lay them down on top of each other, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this one is 
a whole row of pins shorter than the proper card. So of course, this one won't fit on the circuit board. I'll find some other project around the house to use that for, that's not a big deal. But yeah, be super mindful when you're buying your Arduino, look for that red reset button. So that's general overview of the unit. Um, like I said, super happy. What I did do to make things, the backlights work, uh, the buttons themselves, I printed those in white resin, then a couple coats of spray paint, then you take that, you take a file, file this paint just off the raised lettering, and the backlight comes through. Just fantastic. you see that in a second. There is a, uh, a key extender to bring the key up off of the push button. I tried printing that in a black resin, and then realized uh, the black resin, because the part is so thin, it was semi-transparent. Um, you those keys, those key risers, I recommend print those in PLA. Again, 0.12 millimeters in your layer height uh, gives it, you know, nice finish. It locks the button in, no big deal. Um, and it's solid. It doesn't, you don't get any bleed through. I found if I tried to resin print those steps, uh, a lot of bleed through on them. So let me, uh, let me show you what the primary circuit board looks like here. And uh, then I got a little video of what the backlighting looks like. Then we're going to take it upstairs, put it on the sim, and I'll show you how it works. So that's the backlighting. You see how well the print came out. I'm really happy with that. Some of them are a little lighter. Um, I don't know what happened there. That's three coats with a primer. Maybe it uh, needs four coats. And actually, I do believe the COM1 button up there, I think that's only two coats of paint. So yeah, so definitely have to make sure to do three next time. I think I forgot to print that one or something and had to do it after the fact. and. Okay, so we're loaded up here in the Beechcraft, and uh, I've just temporarily set stuff up because, of course, I've got a panel to build to put this all in. So um, I don't have the backlighting hooked up up here, of course, either because, again, I need a panel to put it in. So uh, I get the screen recorder going, and we're going to see how it works. So we'll start. I'm just kind of holding it with my knees here so I can run the mouse. Turn the batteries on. And right off the hop, we got a couple lights come up. And that's our COM1 and 2 mics. So say we wanted to monitor COM2, push the button, COM2 light is on, COM2 light's on the board there. Want to switch to COM2s are active. There we go. Now we can go back and monitor COM1, or we can go back and talk on COM1. Um, not all the buttons are functional yet, because um, of course the uh, SIM doesn't use all of them. Some of the one down here, like I think the DME works. Yeah, DME works. There we go. So we got that one. Um, and an aux, or that ADF, sorry, the aux is down here. Yeah, the aux doesn't do anything, so it's not programmed. A couple of other ones are here aren't programmed. But yeah, um, so once I get a panel to build, uh, this looks like it's going to be pretty good. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description below if you want to um, pick one up and build it yourself. They are starting to offer pre-built circuit boards where all you've got to do is just print the 3D files and then put it all together with a pre-made circuit board for those that uh, aren't uh, very good with a soldering iron. Anyways, I hope you enjoy and until next time I will see you later. Thanks for watching.